I'm Jennifer Petros. I'm a science teacher at Feinstein Middle School in Coventry. I am here aboard the research vessel Endeavor on a program called Rhode Island Science Teachers at Sea. And I'm, we're going to show you a few minutes of some of the stuff we did aboard this research vessel. But one of the most surprising things that has already started right when I got on the boat was I ran into one of my former students here on this vessel. And this is Kurt Raythorn. How's it going? <laughs> well, I'm actually an engineer, so I maintain all the mechanicals. I work on the plumbing, the electrical, the generators, the main engine. Um, you know, anything that, that breaks down, I have to, you know, know how to fix or So, um, you know, science was one of my favorite subjects growing up, and, you know, I was always kind of mechanically interested and inclined in that sort of thing, so this was kind of something that I felt suited to. Yeah, yeah. Hi everyone, this is Nick Terry on the back of the Endeavor uh, on the Fantail. We just brought in the wire flyer. Uh, it was on the water for a few hours and we brought it up. Uh, There's a whole team effort to bring it in. Um, they, they, reel it, they bring it up with the winch, uh, get it up to a certain height and I actually got to help this time. I moved the A-frame up to bring the wire flyer and the clunk weight in. You move it with the control panel and the whole A-frame shifts all the way vertical to bring everything on board. And you get to communicate with the bridge, so I was talking with the bridge, letting them know what was going on, so they have an idea of what's going on back on the fantail. And then when everything's set to travel, the A-frame always rests back uh, in the out position, and so I got to move the A-frame back out. So it was a whole process to put the wire flyer uh, in and out of the water, and it was a fun experience uh, getting to help out with the team. Trish Garland, I'm a, an advisor at the East Bay Met. Um, here we've got the CTD, or Conductivity, Temperature, and Depth uh, sensor system. And we're going to be deploying this. We've deployed it probably about six times already on this cruise. Yeah. Uh, and so basically, uh, right now we've got a couple of teachers opening up all these canisters on here. And that's going to get lifted up on this arm. Uh, put out in the ocean, and then um, as it goes down, water runs through it. And we can uh, we can close it off at any point. And get collect water samples from different depths, um, and there's some sensors on there too that are going to pick up temperature, oxygen, fluorescence, uh, and salinity. Um. Hi, my name is Meredith Ashworth. I teach at Narragansett High School, and uh, we're just preparing to launch the CTD. Um, so safety is a big factor obviously on a ship. Uh, yesterday we had a lot of water coming aboard and whatnot. So, um, so right now we are just putting the lines on that we're going to use to launch. Um, so we've learned a lot about uh, tying the ropes and whatnot. So there's two that will be used to launch along with the winch operator. Um, as soon you'll see the technician from the boat, Lynn, come over and she's the one who's in charge of communicating with the winch operator right above us. We'll take care not to stand above the, directly below the line. And then Joe and I will be releasing it with these two taglines. So this we just leave loose so that we can keep letting out some slack as they need it to release. And then um, when we do recovery later, it'll be just the opposite. We'll be pulling up the slack. Um, and then right now they have those. They have it pretty secured on there. Hi, I'm Joe Bodasevich. I teach at Kickman Middle School. Anytime before we move something off the deck, we have to make sure it's still secured and so on. 
if a gust of wind comes up and the wave rocks the boat, it doesn't move and injure people. So we use these tie down straps, these ratchet straps to keep everything in place until we're ready to lift the package over the side. Academy. And I'm Kurt Rathorn. I'm an engineer on the Research Vessel Endeavor. So we're going to get to do a really cool activity with the CTD. Um, we're going to be taking styrofoam cups and we're going to be looking at a particular property of these cups. So uh, styrofoam is not very dense. It's actually filled with pockets of uh, little closed systems of air. So the idea is, is that we're going to attach the cups. Uh, we've all got to decorate them to the CTD and lower it down to the depths of the ocean about 2,500 meters. 2,500 meters. Um, and we're going to see what happens. So um, what we think will happen is that all the pressure, all the mass of water on top of the cups will cause the air inside to compress and the bonds will get closer together and shrink our cups down to a very small size. And I'm going to talk about this cup. Well, this one's for my mom, obviously. <laughs> and on the top I have our coordinates and the depth. It's uh, 39.5 north, 70.5 west approximately, and 2,500 meters. So we'll see what this cup looks like uh, on the other end. All right. She want to get a Do you want to get the ratchet on? What's it say, Mom? <laughs> so nice they also gave us snacks they left snacks out after dinner after lunch after breakfast all the time some of the snacks range from candy bars just Twix, to muffins that she baked it was delicious overall I would rate this food on this boat an A plus to a depth of 1,000 meters and we're going to collect some samples on the way back up in those bottles that you saw. So if you look at this graph right here, 
each one of these lines is it means different things. So the green one is all about how much chlorophyll is in the ocean. So you can see there was a big spike just before we hit 1,000 meters, uh, 100 meters. So right there, that you can tell the chlorophyll has been growing all day long. That's why you see that spike in the green. And then the purple is oxygen. The red is temperature, so clearly as we go to, into a lower depth, the temperature goes down, it gets colder. And then the blue is salinity, so how much salt is in the water. Um, so that's what the graph means. When we get to 1,000 meters, we're going to fire the first um, bottle to capture some water at 1,000 meters, and then we're going to um, have them bring it back to the surface. them down to a thousand meters and they shrunk and now we're gonna remove them and uh, yeah, see what they look was. like. Hi we're here back at the uh, CTD rosette and, and Kurt is fishing out his cup for mom. You see it? Yep. Alright. So I've here's, on it. here's our control so let's not forget what it looked like before last time we talked to you. <laughs> and there is the new same cup. Side by side. And so just to give uh, an idea of what happened, uh, we learned recently that if you think about the pressure of one of one atmosphere that's equal to the pressure given by 10 meters of water if an object was placed under 10 meters of water. So it's as if this cup, well it actually happened, was placed under 101 atmospheres of pressure. So um, that's what caused um, this, that shrinkage in So now we're collecting a water sample. Each bottle is fired off at a different depth, as you saw Jessica show you inside. So, um, so in order to collect the sample, we first just loosen the nozzle, and then as soon as we let the air in up here, she come out. She's gonna clean out the bottle for you a little bit. So, a little failure on fire. There we go. So we usually do free rinses with the water to make sure that there's no kind of any kind of contamination with it. Um, so just gonna rinse that out three times. And we've also got to rinse the cap from any contamination from prior water. And then we're going to take a water sample and then we took it into the lab. But one of the experiments we were trying to see is if bacteria changes throughout the water column. So we're going to be plating it on a 96 well plate and uh, we're going to put it into this little sample because we're going to be taking it with a pipe pad. up it's a little awkward and then you've got a very heavy uh, 2,000 pound weight that, that they've got to plop off the back of the ship that's going to pull a line taut and then the, the wire flyer will get the uh, A-frame will, will go back the wire flyer is going to go in the water and go down there and collect some data. Hi I'm Ashley Maranzino. Um, I'm a master's student studying marine biology at the University of Rhode Island. My research focuses on some of the sensory biology and some anatomy on some deep sea fishes. Um, I'm not actually collecting anything on this cruise, just kind of giving an idea of 
sampling methodology that other scientists use to look at their uh, research. So what we have for you today, um, we have some sargassum that we collected just overboard. So sargassum is a seaweed. So here you can see it's just a piece of seaweed. Seaweed is an algae, so it's basically a marine plant. So it it's like a tree kind of for the marine environment. Obviously you can see not as big, but each of these little balls right here actually holds air so that the plant can float on the surface so that the sunlight can still reach it and the plant can still photosynthesize so it can still produce its own nutrients. So if you look when you look at it within the ocean, you can see it floats on the surface, kind of like we have in this bucket. And what's really cool about these sargasm uh, beds is that they float along the surface and a lot of little animals live within them. So they use the sargasm as kind of a little floating house to jump around the ocean when there's not a whole lot of other um, other structures for them to live on. So over here we have some of the animals that are living in that water. So we have a couple of file fish. There are some shrimp, some crabs, um, some worms. So all sorts of all sorts of little animals that live in the sargassum, um, and some of them will spend their entire lives living in a piece of seaweed floating in the middle of the ocean. And just to give you an idea of how these fish have adapted to live in their environment, here is a piece of sargassum, and here's another fish that typically lives in the sargassum beds, so a file fish, and then if we put it on sargassum, you can see how well the animal blends into its environment. So that really hides it from other fish that might be eating the sky um, in the environment um, and allows it to kind of hide and camouflage into these sargassum beds as they float through the water. Last thing we thought would be interesting to see the living quarters for the people who spend a lot of time on a ship. We're only here for four days. Sometimes they're up at 30 or more days at a time. So everybody's got different rooms down this hall. What you can see is a uh, quite spacious and then if you have different shifts yeah, you can just close yourself in so you can have privacy. So it's pretty pretty tight but surprisingly pretty comfortable. And it's not always clean but that's the salt water bathroom with the shower.